Hey everyone, uh, we've got the van loaded with eggs, we're just heading off in deliveries and uh, it's been, uh, been a busy week but I've been trying to take it a little bit easier this week uh, because I've um, just been doing a lot lately so I didn't do so much work on projects this week um, so I've been uh, been working hard, we've got some sheep in the farm this week so that was really good to get herbivores in the farm, that's really going to improve uh, the ecology in the farm, the plant life are really, going to really benefit from that, the grasses. Um, I've been doing some work on regulations and uh, certifications and stuff like that there. Uh, so I'll give you a look at what we've been up to. So we've got some sheep. Um, so we've got these lambs, they're textile stuff across. Uh, these are three hoggets that belong to my dad that I'm also going to graze because I can't get enough sheep. So we just weighed them. Um, for our records, we see how they perform, and we're going to turn them out onto grass. They're mostly Texas soft cross, and we've also got a little pet lamb here He's with the crew, so we've got to take him as well. But we'll see how we get on. We'll get them out onto grass. Fresh grass. Come on, pets. My dad, for you who don't know, Huey Mooney, sheep farmer extraordinaire, and now they're on lovely grass. This grass is a lot too long, it's pretty long, we'll just get them to tramp it mostly down, we're going to move through this pretty quick, and then we'll get ahead of the chickens onto some good grass. And that should keep them happy. And these lambs have been just weaned, so the hoggets will teach, keep the lambs settled. Um, Make sure they don't go through the fence and just keep everything in check so it's a good balance. For our fence we use this floss sheep fence. I find they're great. They're 50 meter lengths. Um, I normally put two of them together and it's also a floss charger. Uh, solar powered, that's a 12 watt panel powering. Uh, I think it's a 2 joule. Uh, normally puts out about 9000 volt and that's more than enough to keep the sheep in. These sheep nets aren't that big not that heavy to power and for their water um, we've hooked onto our main line again our reel is actually and it's way off up in the corner up there we're just out in front of the houses and we're just on again a five gallon food grade bucket and uh, it's a float valve in there if i just get over here uh, and the lambs can come along put their head in here drink and we move along with them simple and easy Chicks are doing really well in the brooder. These guys are one week old today and they're doing really good. And there's been no mortalities in the street. Now, this is our third batch and everything's going well. Happy little guys. Look at them go. Happy birds make tasty chickens. So, this is our birds. These guys are. They're just four weeks old now, um, starting to feather out well. You can still see maybe some of these guys here are just still working on putting out their feathers, but they're doing really well. And the green, you know, they just love the grass. When we move them every morning, they just run onto the new grass and go searching for bugs and everything they can find. Um, they've just been fed and they're chilling out now. Got their food and their water. That's when these guys here go and inspect them and just enjoying being a bird. This guy's having some feed. A quick question that came up was uh, why do I use uh, clear see-through roof in here? Um, most people typically use a solid roof but here in Ireland the summers are generally they're, they're mild so daytime temperatures will be like between 12 and maybe 15 16 degrees and it's generally overcast a lot. Um, we typically don't get a lot of great weather here we get a lot of rain um, so I went for a clear roof um, to just generate a bit more heat in there for the birds and, and to clear off any moisture you know and I find it worked really well. And this is our oldest batch these guys are seven weeks old so they're due for slaughter next week they have one more week to go and I'm really happy with how the birds performed. I'm aiming for 
uh, an average stress weight of 2.1 to 2.4 kilos so about a 3.2 kilo live weight and I think we're going to be pretty good these birds are just really well um, I mean it's the green grass every day and clean water happy birds I'm just here checking out some of our fruit trees. This is a pear tree and now we had a really late frost here. I think it was around, I was, it was the third week of May which is very late frost or typically it's the second week of April and a lot of the trees got caught out. Even all the, the native hedgerow trees I see a lot of them got caught out and some of these guys got caught out as well. Um, I don't know if you can see but some of the tips have been got but uh, I think they'll come back most of them I think maybe I have one tree maybe that's completely defoliated that's probably stunted for a year but it should come back next year hopefully um, but uh, I think if we if we take a look over here I've got uh, this is I think in Ireland they call these a fairy tree um, it's a, a single hawthorn small hawthorn tree in the middle of a field uh, the old people used to say they were fairy trees uh, it's supposed to be bad luck to cut it down. Now I managed to work this tree into my tree lanes, so it's going to stay. But you can see, I don't know if we can see the angle here, but even he got caught out, all his tips. Um, so it was typically very late for us. Um, and I'm, I'm glad I didn't have too much veg out. Uh, we lost a few tomatoes, but uh, other than that, we got away pretty lucky. I've got a couple of thousand euros worth of fruit trees planted at the farm. and. Uh, my biggest concern or predator is going to be deer. There's quite a bit of deer um, in the area and they will just annihilate uh, particularly apple trees. So I've I've got a reasonably good sheep fence around the farm but uh, deer would make light work of that. So I've got a real poor boy effort. I've got, it's difficult to see, but I've got two strands of uh, electric fence. So one is at uh, nose height for the deer and then one slightly higher. Uh, one's it's, it's about five and a half, six foot probably uh, say five and a half foot and then one's just a bit over four foot um, at the deer's nose now I have that fence on a timer it comes on in the evening at eight o'clock and it goes off again in the morning at eight o'clock and so far uh, I haven't had any deer come in I inspect the trees fairly regular now this is a real poor boy effort um, running two lines of fence all around your farm I do need to invest in a proper deer proof fence but the reality is to put a, this, this requires about a 600 meter fence um, the whole way around the farm. That's about 5,000 euros in materials. Uh, that's me doing the work myself. There's probably three weeks work in it, I'd say, for me, going around clearing all the uh, vegetation first and then installing the fence. So uh, it's something I'm looking at doing either this autumn or winter. Or uh, it's, it's a big investment, depends how, how well I do over the summer. And how much time I have available. This laying hens are just really doing awesome. Uh, they're loving the green pastures, and our egg sales are doing really well. Um, customers are really happy with the quality of our eggs, and you know it's a proper managed system that creates quality product. And the hens are just doing awesome. Uh, they've really grown out well. Um, their lay rate now they're up over 90% lay rate which is really good and they look really happy. Polytunnel starting to fill out. We've put in, these are some French beans or climber beans, so we've put in a bit of a trellis for them. Uh, so there should be plenty there to keep us going. Uh, we've got, these are melons. I'm not 100% sure of the variety. And there's some courgettes. Uh, cucumbers are coming on well, as well as tomatoes. Um, They've already put on, we've got to take the suckers off tomatoes. They've already been through here, so see if I can see one. Um, bum, 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 bum. Uh, I've done a good job, I can't see any. Aha, uh -huh, I found one. So, if we look in here, you can, uh, quite difficult to get the camera angle good, but this leaf out of the way. You can see right here, in between this union, there is this guy growing and he's what we call a sucker now he will grow off to be a full new plant so what we got to do is once a week we come along and we pinch him off and that'll mean the plant will keep growing upright now most of these have already put on a set of fruit but i've nipped them off as well because generally the first uh 
set of fruit will be very low hanging um, if you've been hitting the ground so we take that off and it just promotes the plant to growth grow higher and uh, also keeps down low we'll, we'll start to prune off these leaves down the bottom we'll start to take them off to get a bit of ventilation going prevent any mold growing on the leaf and the cucumbers are starting to take off as well uh, soon need to be trained and these are macklemore these cucumbers so we need to make sure that we get any of the male flowers so there's no pollination because if the female flower gets pollinated uh, the cucumber can be uh, quite tough or not so pleasant to eat i think it gets better too uh, we've quite a vari variety of tomatoes and these are iris they're from uh, Klaus's variety i believe and then we've got money makers sun golds and a few more down there over here these were some uh, lettuces and oriental salad leaves nevid planted um it's getting a bit too far into the summer now to be doing like oriental salad leaves so uh, we'd cut them and some of these will grow back we'll take maybe one more crop off them and then we'll change these out we'll put uh, salad greens in here yeah these are just putting in some more beds you can see i got a bit better organized i got some cardboard so got a few rolls of cardboard just speed the whole thing up uh, but we roll out the cardboard and then we put the compost in the mulch on top good job and it comes the rain that'll be good for the garden beds I'm just in our one break here and the grasses have really taken up and that's why we got a mulch and I probably even could have mulched a lot heavier um, so the mulch keeps just the grass and the competition for water more than anything off of the plants you can see these willows are starting to go really well um, we've got a little scotch pine here and he's putting on some good growth there must be really five six inches of new growth there um, we look at here's some this is common willow like there's there's nearly 18 inches of new growth on there look at from there up to there so they are just taking off uh, if you see some of our alder back here they are just booming as well um, so it's all life in this rain we've got a bit of rain a few heavy showers this morning it's all gonna really help uh, we'll take a look over at the we've got another one break over here we'll go over and have a look at that here we have, these are some silka spruce, uh, most of these done really well, they're putting on loads of new green shoot. Um, what else have we got? Uh, some more alder, all the alder are doing really well. Uh, here's a little, uh, this is Normandy spruce, you can see he's starting to put on some of his new growth. And over here we've got, uh, this is uh, grey willow, starting to put on, here's some, this I believe is more common willow you know, and at least six inches more 12 inches of growth there and it's so everything is going really well really happy with how these shelter belts have taken off um we put in uh over a thousand trees i'd say 90 90 percent of them taken i have some alders like uh, this alder here see this guy didn't make it but uh, I planted, I kind of stockpiled a load of alder as well. So what I'll do is in the autumn, uh, I'll dig him out and I've got like spare alders growing in a, in a paddock um, in Ardra. I'll take them up and I'll replace them. Um, you, you can't get them all. Um, wonder why that guy didn't take off. I, I'd give them the best chance they could. They got, they got protection from rabbits, wind. They've got a stick to hold them steady. They're mulched, they got uh, volcanic rock dust they've got um, mycorrhizal fungi so i done the best i could to get them going um, but you you just this farm and you won't win them all and then on this side of the gate too um, we've planted in these are douglas fir now uh, a couple of these just didn't take off if we look here this one's fine and this one's just going to burst open you can see some of these have all are just starting to burst open now these there's three here that didn't, didn't make it and it's kind of interesting that the three of them one after the other so i think maybe that's something i done whenever i was putting in these three that they didn't make it all the rest made it that these three didn't make it and again i have spare ones of these uh, that i planted in and are going well so 
come the autumn I'll dig these out and replace them but I'll have to look at my notes and see what I've done here but it's kind of uncommon the three in a row uh, would not make it so I think that might have been something to do with me there so that's it for this week uh, I'm just here in Kelly Beggs uh, just the last five minutes of me drop off uh, we do tree drop offs on Saturday morning. There's three towns around us Ardra, Killy Beggs, Donegal. This is Killy Beggs, one of the biggest fishing ports in Ireland. And uh, so that's pretty much all I have for today. And I'll stay tuned and we'll catch up with you next week. Mm -hmm.